Hi, we're going to be doing a lesson today on the properties of addition and multiplication, and it goes with lesson 1.3 of the California Go Math. All right, so we need to be able to do some skills, and one of them is mental math. You have to add and multiply in your head. The other one is the vocabulary. So when you're writing the um, names of the properties and you're saying the names of the properties in class, you want to use the correct term. So the first one, ready? Commutative. It's the commutative property. Now, a lot of people want to put an N in there and make it a commutative property, uh, like you're communicating, but it is not based on that uh, word. It's based on to commute, which means to move from one place to another. So it's commutative. The next one is kind of a long word, but I think it's pretty easy to say. Associative property. The identity property is probably the easiest property to identify. And then the distributive property, and this one is probably going to take the most practice. Here are the notes for Lesson 1.3. Uh, and really, it's just where in the book do I find the examples of the properties? And they're on page 13 and 14. So write this note, that note, but don't copy all of this down. Just have it ready when the video is uh, playing and you are working through the problems so that you know where to go to see examples of the commutative property, associative property, and so on. All right, so we have three problems that we're going to be doing together. Each one shows a uh, slightly different uh, property, and then we're going to practice identifying some of the properties. All right, have your properties ready. In the first example, we have 38 plus 43 plus 12, and through the use of properties, I can group up or add in a different order that would make it much, much easier for me. The properties say I can add these things in a different order or I can group them up differently. So in this case, I want to add in a different order because 38 is a more compatible number with 12. And they're compatible because when you add the numbers on the end in the ones place, they make a nice round number. They make a 10. 8 plus 2 makes a 10. So when those things happen, it's much, much easier to do that mentally than 38 plus 43. Then you have to start regrouping in your head and you, you, know, you have to remember what's in the ones place and so on. Uh, so this, you know, adding out of order, that's the commutative property. We can move this number in the number sentence closer to the 38 and then add them together. But we're going to be doing this mentally. So 38 plus 12 is 50. And now it's much, much easier to add the other numbers. So I added these first through the use of the commutative property. And now I can easily add in the other thing. 50 plus 43 is 93. So in the first one, we use the commutative property to add out of order. Right now, in the second example problem, we're not going to be using the commutative property and add out of order because the order is okay. It's just that the groupings are wrong. So if I grouped up 23 and 25 and multiplied them first, it's a much, much harder problem, and I can't do that in my head. So I want to do things in my head, and this is where I'm going to start. Instead of grouping the 23 and 25 at the beginning, I'm going to group these up first and do them first. So 25 times 4 is 100. And then I'm going to multiply that total uh, times the 23. And the trick, of course, is to take the zeros off of the 100 and write them at the end of the 23. So I start with the 23, put two zeros on the end from the 100, and the um, product is 2,300. And this is an example of the associative property which means I can group up numbers uh, in any grouping when I'm multiplying or um, adding, and it doesn't change the value of the product. If you did 23 times 25 and got some number and then you multiplied that by 4, you would come up with the same thing. It's just a different grouping here. And this one was a different order. This one's a different grouping. All right, the last one uh, is 6 times 43. So there is kind of no order that you can um, reorder them or regroup them. This is going to be an example of how to do the distributive property. Distributive, right? 
And in this uh, type of problem, you're going to have to see that the 6 has to be multiplied by the 4, and it has to be multiplied by the 3, but that 4 really isn't a 4. It's a 40. So if I distribute the 40, uh, uh, 3 into 40 and 3, and I multiply each part of the 43 times 6, that's the distributive property. So it's 6 times 40 plus 3 is how we rewrite it to uh, be the distributive property, but really we're not rewriting it. I'm just showing you how this is working. So if I multiply 6 times 40 plus 3, I'm multiplying the 6 times the 40, then I'm going to add that to the 6 times the 3. And I can do these things in my head. So the 6 times the 3 is an 18, and the 6 times 40 is 24 with a 0 on it, and 240. And I can combine those into 240 plus 18, which is 258. That is the distributive property where you take one of the numbers, you distribute them out into two parts, and then multiply both those parts by the other number. To me, using them is more interesting and harder. This is, to me, pretty easy. But there's just some things that you have to understand. First of all, there's an equal sign there. So the equal sign says whatever's on one side of the equal sign has to be on the other side too. So if I see two numbers over here and I only see one of them on the other side of the equal sign, that means that the missing number is this one, right? The 24 and the 24, those are equal. The 6 has to be equal to another 6. Uh, and so we complete the equation by that by finding what's missing on one side from the other and then complete the equation we just did that tell which property was used um, and this is an order um, problem right so the 6 came before the 24 on one side of the equal sign then the 24 came before the 6 on the other side so uh, look on your um, properties and see which one talks about order it is, of course, the commutative property. So this is an example, another example of uh, what the commutative property looks like. And here we're just identifying to which property you used. It's just identifying, right? All right, now on the next one, we have a blank, a 6, and a 5 on one side. Then we have a 14, a 6, and a 5 on, one, on the other side. So what's missing from this side? Is it the 6? No, is it the 5? No, it's the 14. So, you know, completing the equation, we did that. Telling which property we used. Now the order is the same, right? So it's 14, 6, then 5. And on the other side, it's 14, 6, and 5. So it isn't the commutative property. It's about grouping. On this side of the equation, and I'm talking about the equal sign, 14 and 6 are grouped up. And on the other side of the equation, 6 and 5 are grouped up. So it's a different grouping. So if you see different grouping, you see that as the associative property. And again, use your notes, use the resources in the book. It will become pretty clear which one is which. All right, your task is to work on page 15 and 16. Do that with 90% accuracy. Then you have checked off that skill and you are ready to move on to the next one. Good luck.